Midweek break. Um, it was a public holiday today, so decided to get out and scratch around. I'm only sort of about 20 minutes um, from my house, and we're just gonna be flipping some sort of trash in the coastal sort of scrub here, and we're gonna see what we're gonna have to. It's nice and sort of cloudy and overcast, so it's not too hot. Which is good because in this habitat when it's hot it's usually useless but I'm going to flip some stuff and we'll link up if I see anything. The problem is with all this stuff, it looks like a lot of this stuff has actually been flipped before, like someone's come here and just destroyed everything. Oh, there you go. That is an excuse of a uh, cross-marked grass snake. Some of this crucifer. Yeah, there. Let me just get hands. Actually, I'll get some footage of it just sitting here before I pick it up. You can see they get the name cross -mark from that sort of crucifix um, the back of the head there. But yeah, these guys are really common in this sort of like sandy, sandy scrub, just to give you an idea again of what the habitat looks like. Um, yeah, he's pretty much aware of me now, so I'm going to just get hold of him really quickly, just so you can see how small he is. Um, they are sort of a, a rear fanged venomous snake, but they're not dangerous at all. Um, you can see they usually have a really nice yellow to orange underneath the belly you can see he's waking up that tongue is sort of flicking out there a little bit but yeah this is really small and this is sort of a, a hatchling this would have been only a few months old at the most a month or two um but yeah hopefully we're gonna bump into a bigger one um yeah because like i said this guy's really small so it doesn't look all that impressive but yeah we're gonna i'm gonna grab a couple of photographs of this guy quick and then put him back so here's just a better look at this tiny cross mark grass snake. Um, as you can see, they sort of go into this sort of, like I said um, before with some of the other snakes, this sort of catatonic state where they, they just really relax and they don't move. They try obviously rely on their camouflage. Um, but every once in a while, they'll just shoot off. And here you can see that nice dorsal stripe going all the way down the back. Of course, that crucifix type shape on the back of the neck where, like I said before, the common name sort of comes from. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much done with this guy and going to get ready to just release him. But unfortunately, he just really didn't sit still that well. The photographs just didn't work out. He's He just became quite wriggly it's pretty much straight after I finished filming. But yeah, I'm going to chuck him back under this concrete but this little brother doesn't look like he wants to go so I'm just gonna let him go and he can just find his way in the grass and do his thing so we just flipped a nice little uh, spotted grass snake under a piece of concrete that was over there it was super cold so he barely wasn't moving but now he's been out in the sun a couple seconds in my hand and he's really heating up these uh, west coast specimens are super super nice um, You've got these really nice sort of dorsal spots and actually add to the true name of the spotted grass snake rather than the ones from the sort of parts of KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng which really don't have any spots at all. Um, this guy's still super small, he'll, he'll be one of these season's hatchlings so hopefully we can find a bigger one um, if he stops biting me. Um, cool, gonna grab a quick record shot just for INAT um, and just gonna let this guy go. Surprisingly, haven't seen any angular tortoises today, which is obviously remnants of an angular tortoise. Um, you usually see a lot of the dead ones during summer, but yeah, this one's obviously been dead <clears throat> for quite a long time. All the sort of scoots are off already. But yeah, sorry, brother. 
but he's not even going to be saved with a good drink of water. There's a tiny little oscillated gecko. That's basically a hatchling. A minute little thing, so... No, I kind of mess with this guy. He's far too small to even bother taking photographs of. So I'm just working my way through these sort of um, mole heaps over here, looking for fossorial skinks. Um, and these are another thing I'm particularly looking for, which I wasn't expecting to find so easily. This is a braviceps or a rain frog. This one, I need to get a proper look at it to tell you which species it is. But I'm pretty sure it's the Namakwa rain frog. That's Breviceps namaquensis. So the light is really harsh. Let me move it into the shade real quick. See if we can't get a better look. Yeah, the lighting is not great, um, and this frog is pretty small. But you can see it's got that typical grumpy-looking face. I actually think this is not namaquensis. This is uh, Breviceps rosea. This is um, Rose's rain frog. So. Yeah, they typically hang out in these sort of um, mole heaps um, that get pushed up obviously by the moles there they can maintain a bit of temperature and just sort of thermoregulate a little bit um, you can see he's relatively small now that he's covered with sand again but i mean there's that distinct grumpy face that everyone knows about rain frogs um, and yeah super rad find i've actually never found them before at this location so pretty chuffed to find one this easily and, and pretty quickly. I'm going to put him down and see if he walks because uh, unlike most frogs they um, they can't jump or hop so they just usually walk around and as you can see they puff themselves up like this. See so here's a look at the um, the breviceps. This is Rose's rain frog and um, you can see he's looking oh he's moving a bit. They um, typically are very sort of lazy they don't move around a lot they didn't do a heck of a lot, oh, but now he starts to be on the move. Um, and like I was saying earlier, it's one of the few frogs we have in Southern Africa that doesn't hop or jump, they only can run, and it's more of like an awkward waddle. But yeah, I'm just finishing up getting some photographs of this guy, and um, yeah, I'm just gonna pop him back under his little mole heap that he was in. So, another classic herping maneuver. A rubbish bag filled with old carpets and as I got into it I just saw something darting out there um, and yeah got a, a pretty good looking olive snake uh, not a very big one they get a heck of a lot bigger than this but it's a decent size compared to all the little ones that I've been finding lately uh, sorry for the noise you can see I'm right next to a highway but yeah just I'm gonna snap a couple photos of this dude um, just a record shot or two and we're gonna keep going, see what else we can turn up. Hopefully you can find a couple more skelotes, some sort of burrowing lizards and that sort of stuff. Um, this is always a nice find. Just letting this little uh, go, snake go back into his spot, well his new spot. There he goes, off to fight another day. Hopefully we can find him when he's a little bit bigger sometime. So this is pretty cool. I just put this piece of concrete off this piece of concrete and that's what I got under it. Oh, there he goes. Um, it's a very, very cold and wet uh, Karoo sand snake. As you would have seen in some of my other videos, we've seen these guys before. This is a very small one. Um, sorry, he's wriggly as hell. Oh, he's trying to bite. We don't like that. Um, that's really not focusing. Yeah, this is a really nice little red, red looking Karoo sand snake. Um, you can see they've got these really nice sort of yellow orange bellies, if you'll turn over. Um, but yeah, this is pretty awesome. Just got that other little spotted grass snake uh, a couple seconds ago. So I mean, turns out like it wasn't a bad day to head out to the west coast and look for some herbs. Um, yeah, again, again uh, I seem to say it every time, but I photograph pretty much everything I find. So I'm going to grab a couple of photos of this guy and then we are going to carry on and see what else we get. Still on the hunt for fossorial lizards and limbless lizards, but I'm just fixated in this sort of bit of a trash heap here. Um, 
which seems to be producing pretty well. So I'm gonna carry on flipping for a little while. So this is just the habitat that I'm busy working through. Um, looking for any more of those mole heaps. I don't know what that is. But yeah, looking for any more of those sort of mole heaps. I'm also quite keen to check out these restios, these tumps of clumps of um, sort of tall grasses here as they often have chameleons in them like you've seen in my other videos of the uh, Cape Dwarf chameleons but in these ones in this particular location you're going to get the Western Dwarf chameleon, Brodipodium occidentale. Um, I've only seen them much further up the coast, I've never seen them at this location but I know there are records of them here so gonna have a look and see if we can't see some of those that'll be quite cool it's quite a nondescript um, bland looking chameleon compared to the cape dwarfs but yeah during the day they're incredibly difficult to find because they're quite cryptic but yeah we're gonna carry on I can see if I can't find the path because I have no idea where I am but it doesn't matter too much the habitat's pretty good all around the spot so here's just another um, oscillated gecko, Pachydactylus heiki, as flipped it was just under one of these like linoleum tiles. Um, as you can see, have a good look at them. They always, always have re these regrowing tails. Get a decent look at her. This is quite a lot sort of browner and yellower than the last one we found. I'll just put it on the soil quick. Have a look. Yeah, they, um, like I said, you can see that regrowing tail is quite prominent in this one. Um, they typically always have regrowing tails. They just seem to drop them at any sign of danger. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I just started flipping under this little rock pile. But I'm going to put her back under here. I'm going to carry on. So you've got to love it when this happens. I just flipped this old piece of roofing here and I wasn't expecting to see anything. And I just flipped this. See, wait, there he goes, he comes out. He was just on his way out. Just managed to grab him. Um, come on, come on, my dude. This is a Karoo Sound Snaker. Semophylax, Semophylax, Semophus uh, Narcissictus. The Karoo Sound Snake. Um, I think I had one in my last video, or the video before that, so I mean you guys would have seen them seen them before. They're an incredibly fast moving diurnal snake that um, feeds on a lot of these uh, things like the rain frog that we saw a little bit earlier, as well a lot of the lizards that cruise around here. This is quite a decent sized one, they get a lot bigger, um, they're usually quite bitey, so I'm just waiting for him to sort of figure his life out a bit and maybe try to bite but yeah I pretty much almost didn't see him um, as I flipped it I didn't see anything and I just saw him shoot off um, into the sort of scrub pile um, you can have a look they're actually quite beautiful snakes so they are super common but just because they're common doesn't make doesn't mean they're not cool uh, you can see he's also got uh, this yellowy orangey belly much like the the tiny little uh, cross mark grass snake that I turned up earlier. You can see there's a, a decent look at him. But yeah, I'm gonna get a couple of photographs of this guy real quick. Um, I'm gonna keep on moving. I really wanna try see if we can't turn up um, one of the chameleons. It's getting quite cool and overcast now, so weather is looking really good. So yeah, see that belly again. And yeah, I'm just gonna grab some photos real quick and then put them back under this piece of roof tile. All right, here's just uh, another look, a more natural look, sort of, in habitat of the Karoo Sand Snake. Um, oh, shucks, I see there's a bunch of ants crawling all over them. But, yeah, that, that won't bother them too much. Uh, they're quite variable. I mean, this is quite a, a brown one. They can be really pale um, as you go further, further up the west coast. Um, and with most of the sand and grass snakes, they often do this. I mean, they're, as soon as I flipped it, he shot off. Um, to sort of dart it for cover um, but then as they sort of relax a little bit they all go almost into this catatonic state where they just don't move they remain perfectly still it makes them relatively easy to photograph which is which is a big plus 
but yeah I'm gonna grab a few photos oh there he goes but yeah I managed to get him quickly um, just gonna snap a few photos and let him go so I'm just gonna letting this crew sand snake go he can go right back under this bit of roof tile or roofing that he was under yeah and hopefully come back sometime and he might still be under there one day and would you look at that I eventually found a path I didn't even know I was in an area that had paths but paths are always good I'm just trying to see if I can't find a couple more mole heaps there's some fossorial lizards legless lizards I want to see but literally every single patch of these tall restio grasses I have to stop and see if we can't spot one of the chameleons in it I mean this habitat is just ideal there's like vegetation just interconnecting everywhere which the chameleons typically like I mean they don't like isolated pieces of vegetation but yeah I've been scanning and scanning these restio grasses and just not having any luck I mean you can imagine it's it's pretty difficult to spot them in here but we're not going to give up and we're going to carry on there we go just yet another dead angular tortoise you can see this one's really old all the sort of scoots are, are coming off um i haven't seen a live one it's just been two dead ones so far but i'm sure we'll pop into one sooner or later it's relatively cool um although it is sort of blue sky and sunny it's not uh not too hot so these guys should be on the move but not this one anytime soon so I've just about reached the end of the trail where I've got to go back and start going to my car um, and there's just trash in the field in the field which is always great maybe we can turn something up ants ants and nothing oh there you go that's a little get a good look at them that is a uh, Pachydactylus heiki, or the oscillated gecko. Um, quite surprising, I haven't actually seen more of these today. They're actually a really common species. Um, that most of these little snakes and lizards, oh, don't tell me I just lost him. Oh, there he is, let me get an in-hand shot of him quick. Give you guys a little look. Um, yeah, like I said, they are really common. It's just, I haven't been seeing any today, which is pretty strange. They're nothing special, nothing to write home about. But you can see he's got a gorgeous, if he sits still for more than 10 seconds. Um, I'm just going to get a look into my fingers here just before I photograph him and let him go. Yeah, you can see he's got really nice sort of yellow eye sockets. Um, quite a bland looking gecko. He's got a nice sort of spotted chin there. But yeah, nothing, nothing too special, but this is probably going to be the last find um of the little trip here i gotta start walking back and i think those menacing clouds if it'll focus means that i'm gonna get very wet on my way back but I'm gonna photograph this guy real quick um and then get out of here so i'm just gonna release this oscillated gecko under his little bit of board here i don't know why there's board in the middle of this reserve but oh, come on dude go under there yeah so he's under there and I'm going to get out of here. So I will catch you next time when I'm out in the field, which is probably in the next day or two. Just still in habitat, looking for mole heaps, looking for any sort of rubble, looking for those restio grasses. Hope you find some chameleons. And yeah pretty much we could actually see just about anything there are a lot of cape cobras in the area as well as mole snakes so sometimes you just see them shooting across the path or basking in sort of the undergrowth like this but yeah gonna keep on track I really actually hate flipping in these trash areas. There's so much glass, that's why I usually use this guy, but for some of these smaller rocks, you can't really shift them around. Oh, there you go. 
What do we got there? Just another little um, spotted grass snake. Come here, brother. Just want to get some. Show the people what you look like. Um, like, like I've said in some of my other videos previously, these guys are venomous. They're sort of a rear fanged colubrid, so I mean they're not particularly dangerous. Although with venomous snakes, I never really let them sort of bite me, chew on me, and, and that sort of thing. You have, if you have a close look, you can see they've got these gorgeous red eyes um, down here in the cape. Uh, to be honest, the cape summer phylax are pretty much the most beautiful of all of them. Um, like I said in the earlier clip, um, but this is cool. Um, another little one, like you can see, it's all part of the. Um, these are all this year's sort of hatchlings. But yeah, I'm gonna get a little record shot. I'm not gonna chill with this guy too much longer. You guys have seen quite a lot of these in the previous videos, so I'm not gonna harp on about it. Um, hopefully, we can turn up a mole snake and, like I said, some more fossorial animals. Um, this is cool, nice way to break the ice after the previous little summer phylax. Cool. So here's just a better look at that little spotted grass snake. Um, like you can see, as with the other one, they've got beautiful markings um, to find sort of spots as the name suggests. But I'm just going to let this guy go on his way straight under his little piece of trash pile again. And we're going to carry on. So down there is where I just flipped that spotted grass snake. And I just came to the top of the concrete pile. And I just flipped this looker, um, see like he's a bit covered in sand. But yeah, this is a, another Karoo sand snake, like the little juvenile that I got earlier. Um, he's also super cold, he's got that bright orange belly. Um, but yeah, quite a nice, I always enjoy seeing these things. I mean, they are super common, um, especially up here on the west coast. But yeah, this is quite a nice brownish colored one with some nice sort of contrasting white on the sides there. I can see they've got a very long, angular, sort of flat head. Please don't bite me. Um, but yeah, so things are really sort of heating up in the last 10 minutes. We've got three or four snakes. So it's hopefully a good start. Now if we could just see something that isn't a summer phylax, that isn't a crew sand snake, and maybe not an olive, um, I'll be pretty stoked. Snap a few photos and let this guy back into his disgusting concrete trash pile that people just seem to think these natural areas are dump sites, which kind of sucks. So I'm just going to release this dude into his trash pile and that's pretty much going to be it for today and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.